Hello friends, we are continuing our tarot journey today with the Mystical Seven Tarot Spread. This is a loosely structured spread where only the seventh card has a specific meaning to it. The others are all just the corresponding factors of what's contributing to the scenario. We're going to get right into it. As I said, this is a seven card reading where only one of the seven cards has a fixed meaning. The other six are just the contributing factors. I have seen this done in two primary ways where you lay out the first card that has the, the standard meaning and then you wrap the other six cards around it in a circle. Or you do the circle first and then the last card is the one with the defined meaning. As with all things tarot, there's more than one way to skin a cat. You can get around and manipulate the spreads your choice of deck to suit your client, to suit yourself. There is a reason tarot is so popular, and one of those reasons is its flexibility as a divination system. One of the other interesting things about this spread is you can choose to limit the number of cards used. So you could choose, depending on what type of information you're trying to gather, limit it to just the major arcana. That would be if you are looking for only the overarching like cosmic forces that are at play or you could choose to use just the minor arcana when you're asking about the earthly forces about the people around you the government entities those kinds of things that are influencing your current situation or you can mix them both because you want to know about both of them for this demonstration i am using the full tarot deck because I think that feels most appropriate, especially with our current state of the world. Coming from the lens of someone who's an American in, in the United States and watching the chaos leading up to the election, this is, I think this is a good time for just a general, what's going on? So we're going to go ahead and shuffle the cards and we will see what they have to tell us. And I am once again using the Fantastical Creatures Tarot. We will see what answers we've got. Okay, so circle first or card in the center first? I think circle first. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And seven. Okay. Did I get all the cards in frame? Mostly. We'll just scooch things a little bit. Okay. So, um, the card in the center because I did flip it sideways. I'm not counting as either upright or reversed. It is the card of death. So we're just going to use the most basic interpretation of the card. The current situation is a changing of cycles. This is neither good nor bad. It can be incredibly uncomfortable. It is a moment of transition. In this deck, death is represented by the spider god Anansi. He is known as a trickster as well as a creator. We need to look deeper at what is around us. See past the illusions, see past the deceptions, to see what's actually going on. So, the supporting cards or the circle of six around it, what are contributing to this current ending and reinitiation of a cycle? Again, because it's in no particular order, we'll just start over here where I first laid out the first card in the circle. We have the Ten of Pentacles reversed. The Ten of Pentacles corresponds to home life. Being the Ten, it is something that has been completed. It's where you have enough for your needs, for a lot of your wants. Things are settled at home. 
you don't have to look at the news very much to realize that is not currently the state of affairs in the United States. There's a lot of unrest about home life. People are struggling to make rent. Natural disasters are literally destroying people's homes and they're not getting the help they need. So that's a contributing factor to this cycle of growth and decay of life and death of birth and endings. Our second card in the circle is the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords in this deck is represented by the Fox Lady. This is a broad term for a variety of fox spirits from across Asia. In reading the description inside the booklet, they're not referring to any specific myth, but more the broad category. So this could be referring to a Gumaho, a Kitsune, a fox lady. It's the, the broadest possible use of this mythological figure. It is another card about illusions. Not everything is as it seems. In particular, fox ladies are spirits who have the ability to shapeshift. Part of the problem with our current cycle of life and death, of transitions, is the number of shapeshifters, of deceivers, currently engaged in this cycle. Not everything is as it appears, and it is mostly for manipulation's sake. Not everyone is who they say they are. Moving to the next card in the circle, uh, we are going clockwise here. We have the Four of Wands reversed. In this deck of mythological creatures, the Four of Wands is represented by the Egyptian Ba. It is the spirit that is associated with our hearts. Upright, this card would represent rest. Well-deserved. Specifically, rest of the heart that the heart is at peace. Being reversed, the hearts are not at peace. They are troubled. Continuing clockwise, we have the Ace of Wands reversed. The Ace of Wands is represented by the Simurg, a creature out of Persian mythology. The Ace of Wands typically represents opportunity for new thought process, new methods of viewing the world. Being reversed, People are, not, people are not allowing themselves to see how things could be different. They're dwelling in the past instead of looking, to, looking towards the future. The next card in the circle clockwise is the King of Swords. Swords is the suit of troubles. Conflict. The king typically is a man who is very familiar with his troubles and how to overcome them. But this deck also has an interesting twist on the King of Swords because he's being depicted as a vampire here. It does fit, as the King of Swords is typically a man who is calculating and direct, not afraid of violence if it comes to that. Interestingly though, the vampire is also a predator. They subsist off of the life force of others. At this time of chaos, at this time of transition, we are seeing one of the direct causes of this disruption are those who are preying on, on their fellow men. Specifically those who are seen as powerful. As those who are in charge and know what they, is, what they are doing. Who, are, who believe they know best for everyone around them. We need to be cautious of people who are overly fond of telling others how to live. The last card in the circle is the Eight of Wands reversed, which is represented by Slefnir. Slefnir was Odin's war horse, child of Loki, and sometimes transported people between realms. This card embodies the concept that you can change your mind, you can change perspectives. Growth is possible, but it's reversed. Something to note is, out of the cards in the circle, all of the wands and pentacles are reversed. Only the swords are upright. Wands are the suit of knowledge, of intellect. Pentacles are the suit of 
finances of home life. Part of the reason people are, the situation is dire and confusing. Being represented by a trickster deity, being represented by death, is people are afraid of what is coming. They don't trust what they are being told, and they are witnessing degradation of their home lives. Instead, what they are seeing, as represented by the two upright cards, are people who are deceptive, who are liars, and who are predators, who are preying upon their neighbors. That is a rather depressing view of the world at the moment. Well, I shouldn't say the world, of the United States at the moment. I'm going to make another addition to this spread, because there is a tradition I have heard of sometimes, just like Pandora's box, sometimes what's at the bottom of the deck is going to give you help, is something that is a needed part of the story. Oh my goodness. What's at the bottom of the deck is the star. The literal card of hope. So this card is specifically depicting the Russian tale of the firebird. A variation on the phoenix. Coincidentally, a card that goes hand in hand with, or an image that goes hand in hand with death. Good things can come out of these changes. We just have to look for it. Just like Pandora's box, you see the, the dark scary things first. But hope is still there. Life will rise from the ashes just like the firebird does. This is part of why I love tarot. I know a lot of people think it's just kooky or a scam or that it's a gimmick. And depending on who you're going to, it can be all of those things. For me, it is a language of symbols. And symbols have power. Another heavy reading today. I hope it was enlightening. As a reminder, I now have a Buy Me a Coffee page, so if you have some extra cash lying around and think I've been doing a good job and want to give me a tip, that's how you can do so. As always, until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye.